hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video we will be talking about the sap mm organizational structure now every module in sap has its own enterprise structure which is a framework on which the business runs and every organization has its own structure now within this structure there are several org units which we will discuss in the next slide now this is the typical org structure of sap mm here we have the client, the company code, plants, storage location, purchasing organization and purchasing groups. Now what is a client? So it is basically a corporate group and the creation of the client in SAP is absolutely mandatory. A client can have several company codes within it. Now what are company codes? The company code is created in the FI module and it is linked to the MM module. So company code is an independent company. It is a legal entity and it and has its own profit and loss. The company code maintains all the book of accounts. Next is plant. The plant refers to a facility where the material stock is kept, stored and inventorized. There can be various activities that can take place in the plant like different types of transfers and goods movement. Next is a storage location. Storage location is again an org unit which maintains the stock physically so a plant can have various storage locations like a raw material store or a finished goods store etc now if you look at this structure this is the client the client has to be assigned to the company code and the company code has multiple plants so this combination is one to many so one company code can have multiple plants so this is a one to many combination after that a plant is assigned two storage locations again this is a one to many one plant can have multiple storage locations so this combination is also one to many so here multiple plants can have multiple storage locations and then we have the purchase organization which is assigned to the plant it can also be assigned to the company code which is not mandatory but the assignment of plant and purchase organization is absolutely mandatory and then we have purchasing groups so if I take an example, a client can be the Tata group, a company code can be Tata Motors. So Tata Motors can be, can have multiple plants. So for example, Tata Motors has plant A in, in one location, it can have plant B in other locations. So Tata Motors can have multiple plants. Now each plant can have several storage locations. So plant A can have multiple, plant B can have multiple. And again, we have the purchasing organization for this plant and the purchasing group who are a set of buyers. Now, what is the difference between a purchase organization and the purchasing group? So purchasing organization is again an org unit which procures the materials and services. It negotiates the conditions and prices with the vendors and is responsible for the overall purchasing activity of the company code or the plant. Now, if you talk about purchasing group, purchasing group is a set of buyers or group of buyers who perform the purchasing activities. So they are a set of people who perform the activities for the purchase organization. So what are these activities? It is the procurement of various articles and acting as a liaison between the vendors. So they normally speak to the vendors to negotiate prices and they also help in procurement of the materials for the purchase organization. In simple words, purchase organization is a department which carries out the purchasing activities and the purchasing group are the set of people who takes care of these different activities inside the purchase organization. Next, there are some very important rules which you should remember for purchase organization. Firstly, the purchase organization must be assigned to one or more plants. So this is very important. A purchase organization has to be assigned to one or more plants. A purchase organization can be assigned to one company code. So it is not a mandatory thing, but it can be assigned to one company code. So a purchase organization can also exist without being assigned to a company code so it can also work as a standalone organization without being assigned to the company code however each single plant must be assigned to the company code if this is not the case then the company code can be determined via the plant so plant to company code is absolutely mandatory now one plant can have more than one purchase organization so a single plant can have multiple purchase organization 
which can be assigned in SAP. Each purchase organization has its own info records and conditions for pricing. So each organization deals with different vendors. Every different vendor has its own conditions for pricing. So a purchase organization has its own info records and conditions. Purchase organization has its own vendor master data. So as you know that the vendor master data is created under the purchase organization. So each purchase organization has its own vendor master data. Now this is important. The first is uh, there are three types of purchasing organizations or three types of purchasing as you may say. One is a centralized purchasing. The second is the company specific purchasing and the third is the distributed purchasing. So in centralized purchasing what happens as you see in the diagram there is one purchase organization which is assigned to multiple company codes. Okay? So one purchase org assigned to multiple company codes and then the company code has multiple plans as the normal org structure. So it is, there is one purchase organization for multiple company codes here. In the second type of purchasing we have company specific purchasing. So in this type we have company code specific purchase organization. So this purchase organization is assigned to this company code whereas this purchase organization is assigned to this company code. So each company code has a dedicated purchase organization which is assigned to each other and then the company code will have multiple plans. Similarly this company code will also have multiple plans. So this is the company specific purchasing. The last type of purchasing is the distributed purchasing wherein there can be multiple purchasing organization assigned to one company code. So one company code deals with multiple purchase organization and each purchase organization is responsible for the procurement activity of each plant. So this purchase organization deals with the procurement activities of this plant and this purchase organization deals with the purchasing activities of this plant. So one purchase org is responsible for one plant. Let's talk about the difference between a standard purchasing and a reference purchase organization. So a standard purchase organization is a normal purchase organization for a plant. So a plant can have more than one purchase organization but it is always better to define one as the standard one. So this we can do in customizing and this purchase org can also be maintained for consignment and pipeline purchasing. Now what is a reference purchase organization? Now this allows the purchase organization to access different prices and conditions of the reference purchase organization. So if I create a reference purchase organization, I would be able to access the conditions, contracts and the prices. In customizing, we can assign a reference purchase organization to a normal purchase organization and each purchase organization can use up to two reference purchase organization when in sequence in which the access conditions are determined. So that is all in this video. If you got value from this video, do like, comment and share with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or feedback, share them in the comment section below. Till we meet again next time, you all take care and goodbye.